Parush Parushev. Yes. A, a very warm welcome to you to the IPTS podcast, which is called The Thank Life you. Theological. And we're here today uh, because you have been such an integral part of uh, IPTS over the years. You were the academic dean in Prague for many years, and you've shaped the, the life and the theology of IPTS. And so this is it, it is an amazing opportunity to be able to talk to you and find out something about your life and what that life theological looks like, mm. um, how, how you be became a theologian and how you journeyed in that. How did you get into this business of theology in the first place? Oh, Mike, uh, first, thank you. Thank you for taking care to, to, to talk to me about uh, life of past in theology and future, probably. Uh, but as always, uh, it, probably in your life and the lives that I have been observing, getting engaged with theology is, uh, as a rule, accidental. And mice uh, doesn't make exception of this uh, pattern. Um, I had a happy life as a mathematician, applied mathematician. I was modeling real mechanisms. I got myself into robotics and then we created a new type of science called biomechatronics, uh, trying to control biological objects, including humans, uh, with uh, developed, you will say, in beginning of intellectual, uh, artificial intelligence at the time. Until I was asked to share what I have done in uh, mathematics with a group of uh, theologians uh, or group of academicians and engineers in Poland. So I went to Kraków and from there we went to Bensko Biala it's, uh, in the uh, mountains. And on the way, I encountered something that I couldn't believe is happening in front of my eyes. It is a procedure of uh, consecrating Roman Catholic priests in Krakow University. Then Cardinal Wojtyla, who became John Paul II later, Pope John Paul II, was a docent, associated professor in that particular university for that particular group of students. But it was much later when I realized that. At the moment, I was shocked that in a communist country, in a state university, there is a faculty and there are these strange people, Christians, who got their uh, priests ordained or consecrated at that particular day, which raised for me a, a sum of questions. I can't uh, first put these two together because we were all behaved in this highly charged uh, atheistic uh, atmosphere. Secondly, that this religion is something obsolete, how young people can get involved in all these things. But importantly, how people react on that. So I was furious and for one more reason they took my hotel room for the guests of this event and I couldn't sleep in that famous hotel forum so there was a, this personal uh, interest in uh, why and on the next day the, the day when I learned that uh, I couldn't use my hotel a friend of mine a Polish uh, scientist with whom we studied in St. Petersburg at the time he took me at home with his children, he, they took the children off the bed uh, to sleep with the parents so that two of us, Bulgarian scientists, can sleep in children's bed, uh, beds at the time. And uh, to me it was a great uh, gesture of hospitality, but I, it, it is difficult to imagine that you get these strangers from the street in, put in the bed of your own children and the children are in your bed and sleeping with, with the parents. <clears throat> All kind of questions. And the next day he took us to this event of concentration. And I was literally shocked. There were almost half a million people on the streets of Poland and Krakow at the time, waiting for this procedure and listening to Cardinal Wyszynski, who was the Cardinal Primus of Poland at the time, um, speech. And the speech was anti communist anti-government because of the abuse of human rights in Poland on several accounts, economic, but political and religious, importantly. And I was thinking to myself, if this would happen in Russia or in Bulgaria, all this crowd will be in the prison. 
And here they are free, and the church is free to speak. And how does it happen? What is going on? So it took me a good 10 years to answer this question. But the seeds were planted at that very event. And my relationship with the Polish academia revealed very soon that pretty much all of them were deeply believing uh, Roman Catholics, that they, I had two PhD students in Częstochowa Polytechnic Institute working with me. And every time I will visit them, will be on some uh, liturgical celebration. So we will go to the church. Mm -hmm. They are scientists, but they sense this religion doesn't mess up with, uh, with their science. So my first uh, affiliation or encounter with the church was on a social level, communal level. For me, all of my life, community matters. So, and that's been very evident for us as we got to know you. And obviously, IPTS itself is a community, 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 yeah. a community of theologians and people around the world ex being involved in ministry. But it's from what you're saying. So, theology, experience of God, the Christian community broke into your life that had been thoroughly atheistic and um, you know, mold molded by that that whole I ideology. So enormously disruptive, but quite unusual for somebody who's now a senior th academic theologian to come from a position of um, studying rocket science and, and, <laughs> and, and other things. That, that's a transition, Parosh, isn't it? Oh, going yeah, going, it going from one to the other, coming from an atheistic background and then finding yourself in... So what were the... Theology was obviously embodied for you in that, in that first experience. Yeah. It was experience, it was part of the community. What happened after that? What took you down this road of eventually moving to California and studying theology um, with McClendon? The first step was to get into the church because it's one thing to visit churches. It's a different thing to become a member or become a, a believer. And to me... The experience with the Roman Catholics was informative, but not formative. I was very suspicious being uh, among ranks of the party authorities of my, my country. I was a party secretary of a huge uh, union of mathematicians and mechanics in Bulgaria. Uh, and I couldn't figure it out how in a church that has such a hierarchical structure like the Roman Catholic Church can go without abuse. Mm -hmm. well, later I learned that there is abuse. And not only in Roman Catholic Church, the abuse is in every structured uh, community and restructured uh, organization. Uh, the turning point was when I, when we, with my wife, were witness to a belief of a woman who became who, who happened to be a Baptist. I never heard about this Baptist in my life. Uh, or no, it's not true. I have heard that they are sectarians, mm -hmm. so that they are not the real mm -hmm. believers. They are sect. But this woman was a uniquely a moral creature. She was something like a white uh, raven. The, in, in a secular artistic society. And her witness brought us to the church. I, I, I was deeply impressed the way how she acted, spoken, speak, speak, spoke about her issues of life, her, her evaluation. And finally, we ended up in this Baptist church. And there is the second step is the personal witness of a believer without saying many words. She never give us the four spiritual laws so this, trying to this, this was a Baptist church in Bulgaria Baptist in, in church your, in Bulgaria in your community. Uh, yeah. the, the first time I went to an evangelical church mm -hmm. I went to different churches mm -hmm. Orthodox mm -hmm. even in Muslim mosques but mm -hmm. not to sectarians I, I never knew that they exist to find them on the first place and she brought us to the church and when I entered there I felt very much at home because the way how the worship was uh, structured the way how they were reading and talking and discussing texts which is very much like we did in scientific circles you present a viewpoint and then you defend it uh, critical thinking or critical argumentations that became later the uh, my my business in in theology but at the time i was simply impressed that it is a um, 
a way of presenting your faith in a structured form that can be followed. It is not mystical liturgy that you don't understand much of what's going on, if at all. It is not a ritual that you have to follow. It is a text that you have to think and eventually compare with yourself. So so as you were discovering this, the approach, were you finding it was changing the way you lived your life in the, in the everyday? What, I mean, it's quite difficult to imagine now what it must have been like moving from a, a, a an atheistic kind of background and the way that you thought about your life and socialized and worked. What, what were the kind of impacts that were going on in your life at that uh, time? Maybe God had uh, a special care for us with my wife because this was the last year before the communism fell apart. So that there was uh, quite a dynamic in the society, especially when the, the governance of the society changed. Many people start looking for another compass for their lives. Obviously, communism was discredited at the time. But in the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, I was a leading uh, scientist for a group uh, in mechatronics and biomechatronics. I had something like 46 people working with me in a laboratory of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. And for them, it was evident that uh, whatever I'm experiencing is good to my health or to, to my demeanor because we communicated on... Uh, so were they, were they noticing a change? They did and they asked, why? What's going mm -hmm. on? And I told them I, I became a Christian. Uh, I uh, embraced uh, Christianity. Many of them have never even heard about it. But for them, the most important thing is the boss didn't change in the terms of uh, <laughs> academic work. We were doing the same project. Yeah. Uh, the important thing is that we start talking about uh, religion and religious things. As much as I knew at the time, I was given a Bible, but I haven't even yeah. started reading it when they realized that I'm a believer. So I'm just a profound change person. So here you are in a scientific community in an atheist country, and, and you're undergoing a profound religious experience and change in life. It's difficult to imagine that just the sheer shift that was going on in your life at that point. Uh, well, it, it, I didn't keep it secret. I, no. it, my, 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 the blessing of God that I would say uh, was with me always is that I was surrounded by friends, mm -hmm. even in science. We, we were not competitors. Mm -hmm. We were assisting each other to grow in what we wanted to understand in science. And these are good friends. I, I, by the way, the first two that knew about my in, interest in religion are my friends still today. We go once every couple of weeks to, 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 to sit and talk. And, and, and he was a director of the institute at the time, and I was a scientific secretary of the institute, and we were very close mm -hmm. friends. And I remember him saying, okay, you are interested. In 1985, it's five years before the things happened, I told him, I, I see something is very wrong with our ideology. We cannot produce moral people the way how the Roman Catholics are doing. And I was telling him, this is how they take care of the elderly, this is how they take care of singles, this is how they take care of the sick. 1985 was a very difficult economically year or years before that for the Poles. And the whole care for this needed people was to be taken by the church. And they will export them in Belgium, heal them, do a surgery, and take them back home. And this is the church, not the state. And I was sharing with him, I said, the divorce rate in Poland is 10 times less than in Bulgaria. How does it happen that we have the best ideology and they have their religion and they live moral life better than we. He, <laughs> because he was also a member of this party uh, hierarchy. He turns to me and said, think whatever you want, but don't talk. <laughs> so they knew that I'm undergoing some sort of... Uh, and the other one with whom I have a very close relationship even today was my PhD student at the time. So these are the... the I mean, it's a totally... Fascinating approach. I'd love to talk for a long time around those things. <laughs> and I know there's so many other things we could talk about. But I think what's so... Well, there's such resonance in your story for today is the way in which 
the, the the discovery of who Jesus is and your faith mm. in Bulgaria just just before the the fall of um, communism um, in in the nineteen eighties. How theology and being and, and being a Christ follower enabled you to to if you like na- navigate such a, a phenomenal transition that's going on in the world? And there's you know, obviously at the moment we feel, don't we, that, that in so many uh, e- economically, in terms of the some, some of the ideological movements that are going on and the, the, the threat with uh, global warming and environmental crisis. So we're not here for a theological exploration of that but it's really as a as a theologian you 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 were birthed as a theologian in in a time of um incredible change how does theology uh um, and being a theologian equip you as a person to navigate um those changes so imagine you had a 20 a 20 something year old standing in front of you now and and you were talking to them about the, the changes that they are facing, um, the way that their life might be being shaken in the current context. What would you say to them about how theology is valuable for, for navigating these changes? Uh, honestly, I have never thought in these terms. Uh, to me, Jesus was not a metaphor, nor uh, a name. It was a reality, but reality... Uh, presented to me by real people in real life situation. The life situation was miserable. But these people never lost their sense of being happy to be with each other, being happy to be in the church, being happy to help each other. And these are the first three, four years, five even. Our son will write later, if you want to see a great day with your pregnant mom waiting for hours to get a liter of milk for your brother is uh, what Bulgaria was at the time. It was a dark, dark, dark years. Mm -hmm. But these people never lost their sense of uh, mutual support, of precisely being a family and community. And to me, Jesus was presented there in, 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 in robust, mat- material is not the right word to say, but realistic terms. Mm-hmm. And this is how I learned who Jesus is, through my relationship with these people. And some were really acting like saints. We don't call them saints, but they were. They were radiating light, This especially more elderly uh, people in our community, but they, who went through all these communist years of persecutions, of ostracism, of whatever, when they never lost their sense of joy of living with their Jesus. So for me, Jesus was first and foremost radiating by the community until the Holy Spirit, of course, mm. touched my heart. Mm. But because I was so highly educated at the time, and there were a number of educated people coming to the church, the pastor, who himself didn't have... Uh, even completed secondary education, turned to me one day and said, listen, we need to do something for these people. You start Bible studies with the group of uh, people with higher education. I said, Nick, what are you talking about? I haven't read this thick book, how how I can do Bible studies with these people? Do it like you do in the university. If you want to do a new course, what we are doing? I said, I'm getting books reading, preparing lectures, read one lecture, prepare the second, read it, prepare the third, read it. I want to do the same. Take the thick book, take books around the thick book, and start reading it, preparing, and sharing with the others. And it would last it for about half a an year. And then the Baptist Union decided it's time to do a structured education for the Baptists. And they appointed me as a director of the Baptist school (laughs) that I haven't even started any theological education. But I had uh, enough intellect to realize that theology is a very deep water, especially when we start receiving lecturers on the level of presidents of leading European Baptist institutions, Mm -hmm. Hamburg, Mm -hmm. Vier Popkis, uh, Grogan from uh, Scotland, um, Bailey from Southern Baptist Seminary, Roy Honeycutt, who was the president, wrote two courses in the Old Testament with us. And you sit with these people and you see this enormous 
level of, of, of getting into the details of the text. I said, this is pres perfect that they are good friends and supporters of our school, but what about coming, somebody coming with strange ideas, the so-called heretics, which hangs in orthodox context constantly. How do you understand that what they are selling to you, in fact, is poison, is not uh, the revelation about uh, the book itself? And I started to catch up on theological education by going to Switzerland to IBTS, yeah. uh, to BTS, uh, Baptist BTS. Theological yeah. Seminary, yeah. <laughs> yeah. usually called, yeah. yes, for the so-called Summer Institute of yeah. Theological Education. It yeah. was an attempt to give the preachers who haven't uh, got any kind of education some understanding what's yeah. in the Bible. And <coughs> it, I just simply got a confirmation that Theology cannot go for three months. No, no. <laughs> it's no. something well, I think serious. The, you, it started a long journey for you. Oh Parish, yes, over, uh, now, now over thirty-five years from that point, and yeah. and we, we haven't got time to explore that journey today. <laughs> we may have to come back for po podcast number two and three and four to, <laughs> to do that because I know it's long. But you went on to study McClendon, and it seems that there's such strong roots in terms of McClendon. And, and his theology, with that lived experience that you went through in Bulgaria, and, and the and the um, the motivation that gave you to to live your faith and to, to develop a theology that, um, that fitted or emerged from that. So the, the final question I wanted to ask you, Parosh, was about. So here you are, thirty five years later, Doctor Doctor Parosh, having got your second doctorate uh, there in in Fuller. Um, what what would the older Parosh say? To the younger Purush of 35 years ago, who was just setting out um, on that adventure of a, of a living faith and then studying academic theology, what advice um, would the older Purush give? Hmm. <laughs> I would say, tell the younger Purush, you have done right. The reason is that uh, science is extremely interesting, but it is narrowed down to particular area in which you can become a super expert, but the rest of life is passing by. Theology doesn't let you stay one second uh, idle, because theology can be either exciting or heretic, and you're navigating the very narrow path between these two options, mm -hmm. and it keeps you alert all the time. But the important thing, and my meeting McClinton uh, confirms that I started my life in faith and later life in theology, rightly with convictions, with the things that guide a person's life, the real things that they believe and act out. Because later I was disappointed by some evangelical stories, some stories with the pastors who didn't measure up to what they had been preaching from the pulpit. In theology and in life, the most important thing is the uh, coherence between what you say and what you believe mm -hmm. and what you live. Mm -hmm. So this is the advice that I would give to the emperor. Stick to your faith. Yeah. Fantastic. Perush, that's fantastic. I know I, I leapt that question on you. So I w also maybe we can talk later on about what the younger Perush might be saying <laughs> to the old, older Perush, because that's always an interesting question as well. Yeah. But Perush, it has been a delight to journey with you now over many years. And uh, Thank to, you, to hear more about your journey today is fascinating in, to, in the life theological. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.